Hi everyone, welcome to Stefani Eats and in this exciting video we are back in Vancouver and uh, I think we're in the mood for some Korean food. The Korean food scene in Vancouver has changed drastically. Many new restaurants have opened up and of course there are still some classics that I haven't tried before. Anyways, come with me. Uh, let's try a whole bunch of Korean spots out. I'm very excited for this because uh, Korean food, like I said uh, in the many, many videos, uh, probably one of my favorite cuisines in the world. So let's see what's up, Vancouver. But before we start the video, I have a special sponsor for you. This is very exciting because this is actually a company I've been following for a little while. I'm so excited to introduce to you a company called Gandago. Now, Gandago is a uh, premium Korean online store. You get different unique uh, Korean dishes sent to you. Not only Korean dishes, but also Korean products. I think I saw uh, beauty products on there. They have weekly meal kits and I'm so uh, thankful that they have sent me some stuff to try. Let's try a couple of items from the meal kit. Uh, so the first one here is a beef rib soup. Uh, looks pretty good, nice portion. Let's cook it up. Oh, just literally just a bunch of beef ribs. Another one we have is the japchae. Mixed emotions for me. Sometimes a little bit flavorless, but sometimes you can really find a good one. So hopefully this is uh, the case for this. We are outside. I don't know why, it's, it's really hot out here. So, three items, we got the beautiful beef rib soup. Oh, look at that, with giant beef ribs. <laughs> They're not kidding around, it's literally just stock and a bunch of beef ribs, <laughs> and that is that is all. There are no veggies in sight. So, because of that, I've uh, kind of put some kimchi as a side dish because their kimchi is absolutely outstanding. And of course, I got the japchae over here. Oh yeah, mmm, oh, love it. First of all, noodle texture, just so bouncy, so delicious, a little bit of sweetness, and then all those crunchy vegetables, that's perfect. Okay, let's go right for the beef rib soup. Let's try the stock. Mmm, oh yeah, straight up beef. Like, very simple, almost therapeutic. Mmm, oh yeah, mm. just straight up beefy. Nice strands, good texture. I think I'm gonna do a bite of that and then a little bit of that kimchi there, okay. The beef is still in my mouth. Mm. Mm. There you go. The beef is so rich, but then that amazing leaf, like that amazingly fragrant kimchi just comes in and just refreshes your whole palate and then the spiciness at the end, the umaminess. A little bit garlicky too. Wow, yeah, I'm in love with that kimchi, 100%. These are uh, two of the main dishes you can get as part of the weekly meal kit. And like I said, the portions are pretty big. I've literally just grabbed maybe a quarter of each dish. So you're getting some big portions, really good quality. <laughs> Man, that kimchi, just, <laughs> I freaking adore that kimchi. Not only do they have prepared dishes, they also have grocery items. They have beauty items, which they obviously haven't sent to me because they looked at that and they're like, well, that's not worth saving. <laughs> uh, so yeah, again, to go check them out. All the information will be in the description. You can go on their website to check them out. Uh, check them out on Instagram too. Uh, and then you can link to uh, their shopping page. So many cool, unique Korean items. And wow, uh, the stuff I'm trying just scratches the surface of what they have. So check them out and uh, let's continue on with the video. Next spot is a really cool spot that I've wanted to try for quite a while. It's called Pal Pal Noodle House. Hal is uh, eight in uh, Korean and uh, it's 88 Noodle House pretty much. And what they specialize in is Chinese Korean food. Now this is a genre I really have no experience in, but it's apparently very popular. And also one of the great things about Chinese Korean food is it's very affordable. It might be the most affordable Korean food you can find not only in Vancouver, but also uh, in Korea. First dish, and uh, this is listed as an appetizer, uh, but we got it as part of the combo and this is not appetizer size. This is pretty large, I must say. So a whole bunch of just fresh, crispy fried pork. And then of course, oh, 
perfect just at the right moment too yes oh okay we're doing well now this is the jajangmyeon uh, so this is your typical black bean noodle oh just a literally super dark filmy kind of black bean sauce on top of a whole bunch of noodles uh this might be meatless too there might be no meat on here but this is just your quintessential uh korean style slash chinese meal and uh man like i said first time trying these dishes i've known they've existed for quite a while but I never got around to it so it's kind of cool to explore these but since these are fresh i think we're gonna go right into these guys so deep fried crispy pork you have it's just literally a soup bowl uh, full of sweet and sour sauce uh, so yeah you know what I'm gonna try the pork by itself just to just to try it out first um, oh yeah oh yeah pretty much by itself almost no flavor yeah, a bit of ginger actually which is kind of cool but yeah hundred percent you have to dip it into that sweet and sour sauce so let's go mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm. Fairly sweet, crispy, very simple. Just so satisfying. Okay, I'm gonna get a bigger piece. Look at this guy. Almost looks like a tempura shrimp. Let's get him right into that sauce. Let's coat him nicely here. Oh. Perfect. You know what? I'm gonna see if I can maybe get a piece of onion on top too. Let's see if I can trap him. Oh, there you go. Yes, perfect. I love that onion in there because it really kind of cuts into the richness of both of these items together. Just crispy fried goodness and then a little bit of that sweet sauce on there. I think it's like the perfect drunk food. If you're kind of drunk and you want to just get something fried and delicious, I think this is like right up my alley. This is going to be the exciting part for me. Uh, as much as the pork is kind of cool, the jajangmyeon is um, <clears throat> really where it's at for me and I really want to try it out. So. Just super dark black bean noodles. Potentially some pork in there, but yeah, look at that. Oh, I have to mix it up really nicely. Oh, beautiful. I think the jajangmyeon itself, um, and some restaurants in Vancouver, and I think this one too, it's just hovering around 10 bucks. So it is a very kind of filling, but also cheap meal. Look at that. Yes, perfect. Oh, look at the noodles, how long they are too. Yes, that's great. Yeah, mm, nice noodle texture, a little bit fermented, and then that's pretty much it. It's just a very simple, hearty dish. I could see this being a very kind of warming dish in winter. What's cool is you get that nice kind of charred onion flavor on top of, of everything. It's a little bit rich by itself, but as soon as you mix it with some of those pickled kind of side dishes, it's just a perfect combination. And of course, gotta finish it off with one more piece of the fried pork, a little bit of that sauce on there. Mm. Well, that's still in my mouth. Build that black bean sauce. Mm. That's, that's it right there. I think you're doing pretty well here. hot dog uh, one of the new members of uh, the Korean food scene on Robson Street very casual spot uh, fried chicken topoki uh, Korean corn dogs bubble tea so uh, yeah anyways bubble tea right over here uh, the cool thing is you get two for one uh, so if you get one medium bubble tea you get the other one for free like I said this spot's fairly new I think it's only been open for the last uh, couple of months hey there you go and this should be an oolong tea Mm, very good, nice pearls. And uh, yeah, once you mix it up, not too sweet. On to the good stuff here. We have the Korean corn dogs. We have the typical potato one, but we've added a little bit of extra spice because that is very nice uh, with the Cheeto dust, an extra $1.50. And of course in here, may look like a plain Jane, but it has 
uh, in fact, a whole bunch of cheese, uh, mozzarella inside, uh, you know, looking for those views with the cheese. They do have, uh, I think, one option for chicken. Uh, for the price, I'd say it's kind of mid, you know, uh, for the amount you're getting, it's not a bad price. This is Yang Yang Chicken, uh, which is the uh, seasoned sweet and sour kind of style. Mm. Oh yeah, there you go. Mm -hmm. Your new beard. <laughs> Kind of matches my beard. Crispy, lots of cheese. Really can't complain about this one. Let's get into this guy here. This is kind of cool. So, uh, these you've probably seen multiple times. Uh, these are the potato chunks on the outside. But what's cool is they have the uh, option to either add like those little ramen things. Oh, oh, you didn't steal that from anywhere. You have the Cheeto dust on the outside. Oh, uh, two words, guilty pleasure. Uh, potato, nice and crispy on the outside. That Cheeto dust, it just adds an extra saltiness, a little bit of spice, and then of course, the kind of juicy hot dog on the inside. Yang Yang chicken. I've tried to say that properly. I've probably messed it up a little bit. Yang Yang? Oof. <laughs> okay, <laughs> just, just focus on the filming. Fairly sweet, not too much spiciness, but a nice balance. And um, these are all boneless, uh, but they're very, yeah, very tender. It's a very serviceable uh, Korean fried chicken. spot is called Ozu. Ozu? Ozu? It's called Ozu Sam. And uh, what they really specialize in is baby octopus. Uh, so here we go. Without delaying, we have the amazing looking baby octopus right here. Uh, we got the small. I originally wanted to order the uh, medium, which is the bigger one, but only in Korean restaurants will they discourage you from ordering giant portions that are too big for you. Probably because they saw how I looked, uh, but it's all right. Anyways, here you go. We have this amazing looking, oh, just a whole bunch of baby octopus. And if that wasn't enough, we have this side order of the Sam. This is the uh, Korean pork belly. There's some jalapeno cream on top. Let's just spin this around. Oh, okay. I just noticed there's some topoki on there too. Yes, the rice cake too. Oh, but look at all these beautiful little baby octopuses and then the bean sprouts on top. You really want to mix them around quite a bit. And then I think I'm just going to put it right into this guy. Oh, okay. Here you go. Mm. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Looking at those octopuses just stewing in the sauce, even I wasn't expecting the level of tenderness. There's spiciness after that and then definitely like a hint of sweetness, but I'm just amazed at the tenderness. Let's go into some of these bean sprouts here. Oh, perfect. Mm. Mm. Once again, just that amazing tingle in the back of your throat, a little bit spicy, but then that very nice balancing sweetness. But I think for this dish, it's all about the baby octopus and how tender it is. Mm. Oh my god. Wow. Gotta finish with a tapuki, of course. Mm. Yeah. Mm. This is the bosam. This is just very simply uh, pork belly. Sometimes you can put it inside of, you know, a leaf or you can kind of eat it as a wrap. I'm just gonna eat it by itself because they put some of that jalapeno cream on there. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Nice porky flavor, a lot of the gelatinous fat on the outside, a little bit of sweetness and not that much spiciness. You will really wake this up. Yeah, I'm gonna dip it into that sauce. Oh, look at that. Yes, perfect. Oh, okay. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. I love it. Absolutely love it. And of course, chase it uh, with some of the uh, side dishes over here. Mm. Oh yeah, pickled daikon, always delicious. And of course, maybe a little bit of kimchi. Oh, look at that, yes. 
Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this for me is probably one of the most underrated Korean restaurants in all of Vancouver. All the items are really well done, but when you're coming here, it's all about the baby octopus. That's really what they focus on, and you can tell by the tenderness and the flavor of it that it is definitely their specialty. Yeah, what a spot. next spot is kind of unique in a world full of Korean fried chicken I can't even count how many there are now there's a spot that just opened up that is doing things a little bit differently and it's uh, Korean style chicken but on charcoal so not fried and then you can add toppings to it had to check it out and here you go BAM uh, we have the charcoal chicken this is our secret barbecue so I think it's kind of like um, sweet spicy kind of tangy sauce and then probably one of the most Korean seasonings you'll ever see is honey butter but they put them on fries uh, so it looks really good gotta try the fries first but yeah loving this setup uh, they have a special right now for grand opening where you can add a topping uh, to your chicken for free so naturally we've added the cheese because it's cheese it's great uh, but anyways let's go for this honey butter fry stuff here oh this looks really good normally honey butter I'm used to having it on chips but on fries I think it's a natural combination too yeah, oh, almost tastes like honey mustard in a way. Yeah, mm. not pretty good. A little bit sweet. Yeah, mm. sweet, salty, crispy. Loving it. Okay, let's go right into the chicken. Oh, the chicken looks so delicious. So, like I said, the kind of uh, secret sauce on there. I think they're using thighs, and for the price, not bad. Look at all these beautiful, juicy thighs the sauce on the bottom you got some topoki the rice cakes on the side and of course just covered with a whole bunch of cheese oh oh look at that oh nice oh and it comes with a side of cajun rice mm. oh yeah that's delicious and that's where it's spicy and yeah they're not messing around right away the aromaticness and the spiciness just hits you and then just a tenderness of that chicken. I think they are using bits of thighs, so that obviously naturally makes it juicier. And get a little bit of the rice on this side too. This kind of looks like Cajun rice. Yeah. Rice is pretty decent, but man, I think it's all about that chicken. That chicken's outstanding. Okay, I'm gonna try to get some more chicken with a cheese on there. Oh, look at that. Yes. Oh, <laughs> nice. Look how juicy that is too. Mm. Loving the chicken, super tender, smoky, and lots of flavor. One more. Once again, really nice of them to give us some extra topoki. Uh, so, a little bit of a spice sauce. Oh, I think it's deep fried. Yeah, it's like crispy topoki. Okay, let's go. Mm. Oh yeah. Mm. Yeah. Oh, that's addictive too. They're hooking us up even more because uh, we've just ordered some fried chicken. Uh, so uh, they also have fried chicken options. Uh, most of their chicken is the charcoal, but they will have four menu items. This is the uh, soy fried chicken. Oh, look at that. A whole bunch of glaze, literally a giant mountain of fried chicken. The kind of glistening sticky sauce on there. And look at that, oh man. <laughs> Yeah, we came here for like one dish and uh, now it's turning into like a giant feast. Oh yeah, mm. Mm -hmm. Super crispy. The glaze has a little bit of acidity to it and almost like a gingery acidity. And then once again, chicken, super tender, very juicy. Mm. Oh yeah. Mm. Once again, perfect balance of sweetness, and then a little bit of saltiness, some acidity in there, and then just super tender chicken, very crispy exterior. That's a solid fried chicken. From what I've tried, all of their sauces are just super well balanced. Uh, so I really like that the sauces that they're making here, and then the chicken, anything you get here, the chicken's gonna be really juicy. Mm. Mm. 
let's uh, try to finish some of this up. And then uh, we do have another spot to try after this, uh, or last spot actually. So yeah, let's go over there, just across the street. Last spot on this epic Korean food tour, and we are at Seoul Lee's. Uh, this is uh, very close to our previous spot, so probably one of my favorite kind of areas for Korean food. I think this is the area for Korean food in all of Vancouver, uh, just kind of on that Burnaby slash Coquitlam border. This place has been on my list for a while, and uh, it, it's such an old school vibe. I love it, and they're very well known for a bunch of different seafood dishes, some of them pretty unique. And we have quite a spread over here. Wow, okay, so much stuff. We have our deep fried skates. Uh, we, or sorry, no, sorry, this is deep fried sole. Then we have our skate sashimi, something I've never tried before in the spicy sauce. And then this monstrosity. This is a monkfish stew with a whole bunch of soybeans and then just the spicy sauce we asked for it. Extra spicy, so we shall see. Okay. Let's go into the food. I don't even know what to start with. This looks amazing. Okay, I think I'm gonna start with the sole because the sole is, is we've been taking videos for about five minutes now and uh, the sole is probably not as crispy as it should be. This sole, oh my God, look at that. That's just the crispy. Oh, I don't even know how to eat this really. You know what I'm gonna do? Okay, I'm gonna get some rice. Right away, as soon as you take off the crispy skin, uh, you just see just, oh, look at that. Just the melty soul meat right there. Oh, and this for me, this is like Korean soul food. Oh, look at that. It's pretty good. Little skin hat. Mmm, super buttery. The coating is really crispy and then still pretty thick. Mmm, but that interior is just so buttery, so melty. And what's cool too is you can just kind of scrape it off the bones. And what's good about sole is you're not going to have too many bones. The bones kind of stay just where they're supposed to be. Maybe add a little bit of kimchi to it too. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Simple, but just perfectly done. Let's go into this skate sashimi. So this is something I've never had before. I've had skate raw, but not with this kind of spicy sauce here. And skate is actually something that just, it's a quintessential uh, Korean fish. Uh, very, very beloved. And oh, look at that, look at this giant bad boy right there. Oh, just covered in the spicy sauce. I'm gonna put it on the rice just to season it a little bit. All right, let's try it out. First two are same bread. Yeah, third, whatever. Whoa, okay. Wow, I wasn't expecting the kind of different textures on there. You have the super soft skate, almost vinegary, almost like it's pickled, spicy. There's like a crunchy cartilage bit that also is attached to that piece of meat. Uh, so once again, the softness, and then you're kind of just crunching at the end. Uh, it's probably not something that's for everybody. It kind of threw me off in the beginning, but the more I kind of crunch into it, the more I get used to it. Oh yeah, and then some of these guys on the side too. Mm. Oh, yeah, super crunchy veg. Not sure exactly what that is. Very fresh. Mm. Okay, this is monkfish. Maybe one of my favorite ways to have monkfish is in this kind of stew, the spicy stew, and then the kind of soybeans on the side. Look at all these soybeans. Oh, yes, perfect. Okay, let's put that on the bottom there. I'm gonna get the nugget from the top. Oh, put them on top. Let's take a bite. Mm. Yeah. That monkfish is nice and tender. Then I love just the crunch of those bean sprouts and then the sauce. The sauce isn't too salty, uh, but there's definitely a spiciness. It's one of those twos where in the beginning, you think you're gonna be okay. And then the more you bite into it, the more you realize you're in trouble uh, halfway through. 
Uh, it kind of builds up in your stomach, in your head, <laughs> and in your taste buds for sure. Mm. Oh yeah, mm. that's why I love monkfish too. Because you got this kind of super gelatinous -y, kind of thick skin. And as soon as you bite into it, it melts in your mouth. Now the price is a little bit up there, but when you're looking at the portion itself, honestly, it's not bad at all. I've been to other spots uh, that serve kind of similar dishes. And you know, for like 40, 50 bucks, you might be getting half of what this plate is. Uh, so overall, I think you're getting your money's worth for sure, especially when it comes to monkfish. Monkfish is a very expensive fish. And that is it for our epic Korean adventure in Vancouver. Korean food in Vancouver, always evolving, always a bunch of new spots. And even uh, since the time we've made this video, other cool new joints have opened up. Uh, so we'll definitely try some more in the near future. Of course, let us know if there are any other spots that are worth trying. That will be it for us. If you do enjoy our videos, don't forget to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell icon so we can notify you of future videos. And of course, hit us up in those uh, comments. Give us some good old recommendations uh, for Vancouver and maybe around the world too. Let me know. Anyways, we'll see you very soon. Ciao for now.